Good morning, everyone. Our reading for today is Psalms chapter 73, verses 1 to 3. Truly, God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped. For I was in use of the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for our suffering. This life is hard. Our body fails us, but we know that through it all, you are the strength of our heart and our portion forever. Our suffering drives us even deeper into your love and shows us that your grace is enough every single day. Thank you for the hope of heaven. Thank you for the hope that one day we will live in a place without sin and brokenness. We will be reunited with loved ones, have our tears wiped away, and experience the life without sin we always meant for. But Lord, always remind us that if we don't have, if we don't have you, we have nothing. Remind us that nothing else will satisfy us. What makes heaven is that you are there. We look forward to that far more than anything else. You will be our portion forever. Help us always to remember your promises that because of Jesus. We will spend eternity with you, that you are making all things new, and that the pain and sorrow of the life will one day be a memory because of your amazing grace. Father, we pray for your anointing, Pastor Jacques, as he speaks your words to us. Be his lips, Lord, and bless every word that he will share to us, and bless our hearts to Lord as we listen to your words. We ask these things so that you may be honored and glorified and through our life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And today uh, marks the beginning of Advent. So today is Advent Sunday. And today's sermon will be the promise of Advent. Uh, and our scripture reading for today will be from Romans 5, uh, verse and it says the following but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us let's pray together Heavenly Father we we thank you this morning Lord as we come to this time of the year the Advent season that that starts today Lord uh, I pray today, Lord, that the real message of this time of the year will resonate in our hearts, Lord, that we will see that Jesus is the real reason for this season, Lord. I pray that in this busy time of the year that we will we'll take time to reflect upon the last year and, and see where we're really at, Lord, to, to examine ourselves, Lord, to see if this message of Christmas and the crucifixion of Christ still beats uh, within our heart, Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord, uh, during this time uh, and lead us in your ways. Thank you that you are good and thank you that we have the privilege of preaching this morning and opening your holy scriptures. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, I hope you are excited about this time of the year. If you are excited about this time of the year, you are allowed to say Amen. Amen. If you are uh, excited for Advent and also excited for, for the coming for Christmas in amen. four weeks time. Yeah. Three more Sundays and then we'll have Christmas. It's crazy yeah. how time has flew uh, this last year. It's yeah. So Advent, when we look at Advent the meaning of admin means the following. It means the arrival of a notable person, thing, 
event. So this is what Advent, the, the meaning of Advent is. There's a, a notable person will come, uh, a very important thing or event will happen. So in the Old Testament, uh, the nation of Israel awaited uh, this notable person and this event to take place. And we know that this was the coming of Jesus. And for us today as Christians, Advent also means the second coming of Christ. We, we, we await the, the event, the second coming of Jesus. This is what we are looking forward to. And Christmas time, which is around the corner, we remind ourselves that a child was born for us. So this is a very, very uh, important time of the year, like Christmas and, and, and Easter. They, they cannot go with one another. Oh, sorry, they do need to go with one another. We can't separate them from each other. Without Christmas, we will not have Easter. And without Easter, we will not have Christmas. So they are important because Jesus was born for us. A child was born for us. And I, I'm excited about uh, this time of the year, Advent and Christmas, as this reminds me that a child was born unto us uh, who lived a perfect sinless life uh, that he died for our sins on the cross and also that he rose from the grave he ascended into heaven where he sits at the right hand of the father and intercedes for us and then one day that he will return to come and collect us this is the reason why uh, I am excited about this season and I think last Sunday I preached about the longing for Christ's return do you still long for Jesus to come back? Uh, do you still look forward for him breaking through the clouds, coming on the white horse uh, in the sky to come and collect you? Even though the world uh, makes out Advent and Christmas to be something that we don't always agree with, it is important for us as Christians to focus on the birth of Christ. You know, the world makes it out, they sell the story of a big fat man with a white beard that comes to give you presents, <laughs> mm. which they call Santa Claus. We, we know that's not real. Children believe in this fairy tale. Uh, this is what the world tries. And like I always say, whatever God created good, Satan tries to corrupt. He tries to change. I mean, we have Jesus that was born and now we have another so-called figure that brings you presents. But I'm not sure how he does it in Korea because there's no chimneys. Yes. I'm not sure if he knocks on the door and brings presents. I'm, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, we know that's not a real story. But even though the world makes Christmas and Advent something else, we as Christians need to remind ourselves the true meaning about Christmas. And like I always say, the tree reminds me uh, that a child was born unto me and that on that tree uh, Jesus was crucified so the creator that created the tree uh, was crucified on the tree this is what the, the Christmas tree means uh, means to me and I know many people have many things to say about the tree but we do not worship the tree the tree is just a reminder of the greatest gift that we can ever receive was Jesus Amen. given to us and there's an old there's an old legend uh, that in the Reformation there was a guy called Martin Luther and he walked uh, on his way home and he saw the evergreen trees in the cold of night he saw the stars uh, behind the evergreen trees and he wanted to do something to, to light up the moon in his own house and apparently he chopped down the tree and took it to his house and decorated it for his children to remind them that in a dark, bleak world, Christ is the answer. So that's the legend we have. But like I say, what's the motive? Why do we put it up? I put it up because it reminds me that Jesus was given uh, as a for me as a present, as a sinner. He came to die for for me. So nevertheless, whatever. Uh, Advent and Christmas, the world makes it out to be, it can never change the fact 
that Christmas is about Jesus. And as far as I know, the whole world has uh, a vacation day on Christmas Day. Uh, whole world. Everybody has holiday on the 25th yes. of December. So that doesn't change the fact, even though people do not believe in Christ, even we though we have countries that uh, renounces Christ, they have Christmas Day as a holiday. Yes. Which it doesn't change the fact that the child was born unto us. So this is something that we should always remind ourselves, regardless of what the world makes it out of, or what day exactly Jesus was born. What matters most is the child was born. Uh, God himself came down, born in the flesh as a baby to come and save us. So if it was on the 21st of December or on the 1st of January, it doesn't change the fact that Jesus was born. And he lived among us and he died on the cross for us, but also that he rose from the grave and that he ascended into heaven. And in the same way he went to heaven, he will come back. So this it doesn't change this. This will always be the truth. Uh, so when we look at Advent, we see that uh, it's, it reminds us of a notable person, a thing or event that would happen. And when we look in the Old Testament, and we see in the book of Isaiah 9, verse 6, we see a prophecy about uh, this coming event or this notable person that is on the way. And Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Amen. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So here we have one uh, predicted prophecy about the coming uh, Messiah. And the other one is in, in Micah 5 verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrata, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler mm -hmm. in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient of days. Also, this is only two verses of the Old Testament that prophesied about the coming of this notable person or this e event. And also in the New Testament, we see the second coming of Christ, Advent for us today. Jesus said in John 14 verse 3, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. So we see, second, this is something that we long for, uh, the second coming of Jesus. And also Titus 2, verse 13, Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So scripture is full in the Old Testament about Advent, Jesus coming. We knew, we know that he came in the Gospels. And then in the book of Acts, he went back to heaven. But for us today, he is coming back. So it should actually always be Advent in our heart, not just on the 3rd of December <laughs> every year. It should be Advent in our hearts every day because he will come back uh, one day. So we can see from these Old Testament scriptures that Jesus was predicted to be born in Bethlehem. Micah 5 verse Two. So I'm just going to go into Micah 5 verse 2 here to give you uh, the background of this verse and what is going on in this verse. So Joseph went from Nazareth to Bethlehem because he was from the house of David. Joseph came from the house of David. Bethlehem, it was a small town that was chosen by God as his birthplace for his Son. So this is the Joseph had to go, Joseph and Mary had to go to Bethlehem, Joseph had to register, uh, there was a census going on, he had to register his family, Mary went with him. Even in Matthew uh, 2 verse 5, the chief priests and the scribes, the Pharisees, mentioned the obscurity of this town when Herod inquired about Jesus. And they told him the following, 
in Bethlehem of, of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means less among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So we see even when, the, when Herod uh, inquired with the scribes and the Pharisees about the birth of Jesus, uh, it's been predicted or prophesied that he will come from Bethlehem. Bethlehem, when we look at the word Bethlehem, means house of bread. The word Bethlehem means house of bread. And how interesting, Bethlehem means house of bread. In John 6 verse 35, Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life. The resemblance we have, Jesus coming from Bethlehem, the house of bread. But in John 6 verse 35, Jesus himself says, I am the bread of life, sustaining us not only physically with physical food, but also with the word of God. Because we cannot live without the word of God. Uh, yes, we need, we need physical food. But I think more importantly, our spiritual food is more important because we will die. Our, our, our spirit will die if we do not consume spiritual uh, food. So Jesus is the bread of life. He comes from the house of bread, which is Bethlehem. And also in, in Micah, Micah 5, 2 here, we see the following. Who's coming forth is from of old from ancient of days. So, so Micah 5 verse 2 uh, says that Jesus is old, is ancient of days. And when we look at Revelation 22, 13, it says the following, Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So yet again here, yeah, uh, this is referring to Jesus as being God, being equal with God. This means that from the very, very beginning, uh, before Bethlehem existed, Jesus was there already. He's the ancient of days. He was with God in the beginning. Jesus also said uh, in John 17 verse 5 that Jesus was with God before the world existed. John 17 verse 5. He was in perfect relationship with the Father. This is why we can say that He is the Ancient of Days. He's been there from the beginning of time. So from the beginning of time, uh, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit was in fellowship with, with one another. That link was never broken between them. They were there together from the beginning. Jesus was before Bethlehem. So this is why uh, Abram uh, could also say that he longs to see the day of Christ. And Jesus also said that he was before Abram in, in the book of John. And the Pharisees, they didn't really understand uh, what Jesus meant with that. So regardless of, of what happened in redemptive history, God's plan was always from the foundation of the world. Jesus was always part of the plan. Always, from the foundation of the world, Jesus was part of the plan. Could it be that God uh, knew Adam and Eve were going to fail? Yes, because he knew everything. I believe he hoped they would have made a different choice. But Jesus was always part of the plan. From the beginning, before the foundations of the earth were created, Jesus was part of that plan. And we find that in 1 Peter 1.20 and Ephesians one verse 4, that Jesus was always part of plan, of God's plan. So why did Advent have to come? We need to ask ourselves the question. We see here that Advent is Jesus. It is the Old Testament predicted him coming, saving uh, the nation of Israel. Unfortunately, the nation of Israel uh, saw Jesus. Uh, they believed that Jesus would be a deliverer that will deliver them from Roman oppression and not really saving their souls. That is why they rejected him. That is why seven days before his crucifixion, they praised him with the palm trees and seven days later they would crucify him because he did not save them from the Roman oppression. So 
this is why Jesus came. The reason why Jesus came is the following. So in the Old Testament, Advent, they longed for a Messiah to deliver them from, from Roman oppression, which didn't happen because Jesus had a far more bigger picture in mind than just saving them from Roman oppression, but saving their souls. That was Jesus' mission from, from the beginning. And then and in, we see in the New Testament, after they crucified him and he went to heaven, the apostles start preaching this message. And this is why we need Advent Church. This is why sinners today need Advent. This is why we need to remind ourselves and uh, why we have Advent today. Because we were sinners in need of a Savior. Mm -hmm. This is why we need Advent. We need to remind ourselves. This is my testimony. I was a sinner in need of a Savior. Mm -hmm. Not all the other things, the horrible things I did in my life. Not those things. I was a sinner in need of a Savior. And this should always be our testimony. Nothing less yes. and, and nothing more. We needed someone to save us from the wrath of God. You know, many times people um, people would argue and say, God saved me from hell. Yes, in a sense, he, he does save us from hell. But most importantly, he saves us from his own wrath. Because we deserve his wrath to come upon us. He poured out his wrath on Jesus on the cross for those that will ever believe. But if you die without accepting Christ, you will have God's wrath come upon you. This is why we needed a Savior. This is why we needed Advent. We needed someone to put us into right standing with God because we broke that relationship with God in the Garden of Eden. So Jesus, fully God, fully man, he left his dwelling place. He left heaven for sinners. This is why Advent is important. Because people need to hear this message. Christmas is not about how many gifts I can get or how many gifts I can buy. Yes, it's nice giving things yes. or getting things. It's nice, but it's secondary. This is why Jesus had to come. We, we saw that the Jews rejected Jesus as the Messiah because they expected him to free them from the Roman oppression, which he did not. Jesus' purpose went beyond freeing from the Roman oppression. It was to save souls. It was always to save souls. This was Jesus' mission, to put men, sinful, wretched men in right standing with God, to redeem us onto God. So how can we apply this to, to our own life uh, today for our application? Why is Advent important? How are we going to apply this to our lives? And the first thing is, Advent reminds us, this time of year, Advent, uh, sorry, Advent and Christmas, that it's not about us. This time of the year is not about us. If it is your birthday on Christmas Day, yeah, maybe it is about you as well. But this time of the year, is, it, it is not about us. It is not. There's a bigger picture and purpose uh, at work here. The main role in this time of the year belongs to Jesus. He should be the focus. He is the true hero uh, in this story. And we find this in John 3, verse 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that all who will believe in him will be saved. So Advent and Christmas time is about Christ, reminding ourselves what he did uh, for us. The second one, Advent teaches us patience. Something I think many of us struggle with, myself included. Advent teaches us patience. As we uh, await the return of Jesus, uh, let's live out the fruit of the Spirit. As He conforms us into the image of His Son day by day, let's live out the fruit of the Spirit while we are awaiting 
his return. Advent reminds us of the promises of God. God's past faithfulness reassures us as we wait for his promises. Jesus promised to return. And this hope should motivate us to preach the gospel. While we wait for him, that hope of him coming back, we should preach the gospel. We should foster fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ as this prepares us for joyful suffering. I do not know what 2024 holds, church, but, but I know that God holds 2024. And that we trust him regardless of what's going to happen, he is in control. And his promises will come to pass. And at the end, it, work, it works out good for the Christian. Yeah. Have you read Revelation, the last chapter? It works out good. At the end, it, it will work out good. Advent uh, can bring a slowness to things. Usually this time of the year, it's busy. It's a very busy time of the year. People have year-end functions and there's so many things going on. But Advent, we should spend some quiet time this time of the year, read and meditate on the scripture and especially the life of Christ as this will remind us of the true sacrifice and the gift of salvation. We need to be grateful that through him we have become children of God. Yeah. So it's also a good time to reflect on the year, to, to do some examination to see where you're at in, in your walk with God, uh, just to calm down. And also the next one, Advent gives us time to reflect on what matters most. Huh. What matters most to you in your life? What's the, the most important things in, in, in your life? Is it wealth, uh, health, blessings, or is it the second coming of Christ, or is it uh, to preach the gospel? We should examine ourselves to see where we truly at. If, like I always say, I know I sound like a broken record many times. If the Apostle Paul did it, uh, we should do it as well. And remind ourselves that this time of the year is about Jesus. It's really the most wonderful time of the year, even though it's cold. It's a good time of the year. We needed a savior. We needed someone to put us in right standing with God to save us. We did not deserve it. We did not deserve uh, salvation, but God gave it. He chose to give it. That's why I always say I can never, regardless of what happens to me in life, I can never question God. I can never question him. Because everything I receive from him is unmerited grace and favor. I did not do anything to deserve it. The only thing that I brought to my salvation is my sin, my wretchedness, yes. my evilness. Other than that, he has preordained me to be saved. There's nothing special about me. And this is a, the message that we should preach, especially this time of the year. And this can also be a very lonely time of the year for many people. Christmas, Advent, Christmas, families, maybe some people have lost loved ones, maybe you are far from home. It's also a good time to reach out to, to some people and stay in contact with people uh, and pray for one another, especially this time uh, of the year. It can be a very lonely time for many people as well. But let the message of Christ, his, the promise of Advent, and the birth of Christ, let it resonate in our heart. Let's meditate on it. Let's pray on it. And let's share this message to the world that a Savior came yeah. to save us. Yeah. And He's coming back. Yes, he Many people think this, well, the Bible is a fairy tale, but it's not. He's going to come back. Yes, he or every eye will see Him. Every ear will hear Him. Yes. He's coming back yeah. for those that belong to him. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you this morning, Lord, for the promise of, of Advent, Lord, as we as we looked in, when we read the Old Testament, Lord, that you, you had this promise, Lord, all the way back from Genesis 3 verse 15, where you said that 
there will come one from the woman that will trample on the head of the serpent and you had this promise lord from genesis 3 15 that you will send someone to come and save us heavenly father to save us from your wrath to save us from our sins from our sins lord to, to put us in right standing uh, with you lord and i pray this time of the year that jesus will be the reason for this season in our hearts lord that we'll not get sucked into what the world has to offer this time of year lord but that we'll keep our minds and hearts scripture saturated lord that we will see what this time is about lord i also pray for people this time of the year lord that are that are lonely lord and depressed this time of the year lord maybe some people have lost family members or there's some things lord that some families need to, to sort out lord lord you you know the hearts of everyone every father and i pray this time of the year that with the message of, of christ birth that your message of reconciliation lord will also be in the hearts of our lives lord, that we will reconcile lord that we will uh, reach out to people in the time of the year lord help us lord to, to preach christ to live christ to think christ and let us be saturated uh, with this message a child was born for us wonderful counselor mighty god prince of peace everlasting father and i thank you lord that you chose to save us lord not through what we did lord but through your grace heavenly father thank you that you were good and thank you that we can look to the scriptures lord to guide us and lead us in this time of the year I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.